Uh, she's been a visiting scholar here at the Gund all semester, so we're excited to hear her presentation. She'll be talking about the environmental social economy. Thank you, Brian. So, good morning. Thank you very much for coming here today. Today I will present my project. So, with it, I hope that receiving from you advice and suggestions and corrections. <laughs> so, feel free to do it. But before I present my project, I would like to talk a, a bit about my relationship with this talk. So, since my undergraduate, I have been studying with green accounts. And in my undergraduate, I studied about the system of integrated environmental and economic accounts. And it's used by United Nations in, in its pilot project. It was in Mexico. So, initially, my proposal in the master was to do a system of integrated environment and economic accounts to Brazil. But in Brazil, we doesn't have the, the available data to do it. So my advisor suggests me to work with input-output analysis. It's a mathematical model that I will speak, I will talk about it next. And, um, but this, this kind of method doesn't allow me to include depreciation, depreciation of natural capital. And when I was studying about the system of integrating the environmental and the economic accounts, for me, the most important issues from the handbook of United Nations is the issues about the depreciation of natural capital. So I thought I have to move to other kind of model. And I started to work with social accounting matrix. But after six long months studying about it. <laughs> when I was just ready with my model, I found out other similar model, very, very similar. But the difference uh, of this model and my model is that this model doesn't include depreciation. So I was a bit disappointed, <laughs> but at least I, I can figure out that uh, I am in the right direction. Well, so we are calling this model that environmental social accounting matrix for the Brazilian Amazon region. My presentation is divided into following parts. Introduction, objective, theoretical background, methodology, conclusion, and the references. So, I will start talking about the scope of my thesis, that is the Brazilian Amazon region. Here we have some data about it. So, Brazilian Amazon region includes the state of Acre, Amazonas, Roraima, Rondônia, Pará, Amapá, Tocantins, Maranhão, and Mato Grosso. Its area is over 2,000 square miles. That is. Two. Sorry, 2 million. Thank you. <laughs> that is 60% of Brazilian territory, but comprised just over 12% of the national population. The main environmental impacts on this region are mining and deforestation due to agriculture and livestock. This is the Brazilian Amazon region. In this picture, we have the Amazon basin. <coughs> 
about the economy of Brazil Amazon region. Here, there are the main activities with relation to GDP in Brazilian Amazon region. And we can recognize that the activities that have a big impact on the environment have considerable importance in the Amazon economy, such as mining, other activities of agriculture and livestock, cattle, soybean, and sugar cane. So, the data that he was using in, in our work is from the inventory of the Ministry of, the Ministry of Science and Technology of Brazil. But the inventory is to all Brazil, every Brazil. And I think it's interesting to show you the emissions in Brazil and the after I will show the emissions in Amazon region and the rest of the Brazil. So this is a graph of the CO2 emissions in Brazil and we can figure out that land use change is the biggest factor responsible for CO2 emissions and for the most these emissions are growing up. Here we have the methane emissions to Brazil, in Brazil, and the main activity responsible for methane emissions is livestock. It makes sense. The livestock is also the biggest activity responsible for the emission of nitrous oxide, and once more, the emission is going up every period. So, if we calculate the emissions for the gases in CO2 equivalent based on the global temperature potential methodology, we have this figure. And we can, the conclusion is that land use change is responsible for 68% of the CO2 equivalent emissions in Brazil. It's a big number. Well, I, I am trying to show you the, the basis that help me to, to think about this talk. And I think it's necessary to remember that emissions of greenhouse gases is a kind of negative externalities. So, there is a potential emissions of greenhouse gases due to economic activities in Brazil and in the Brazilian Amazon region has been responsible for over 2% of all world emissions to do deforestation, due to deforestation. Greenhouse gas emissions are able to decrease the economic welfare that is. They can be considered a negative externality in negative externality. Here we have the traditional description of negative externality uh, of the Indian Valley. <laughs> and negative externality occurs when inactivity or transaction by some parties cause an united tended loss in welfare to another party. And no compensation for the change in welfare. So, I think that, like in the, hand, the book of Josh and Daly, we can find the welfare is divided into economic welfare and economic, non economic welfare. So I think, I think that the GDP is still the macroeconomic indicator to show the economic welfare. But we know we know that the GDP has flaws. And I think it's possible include the greenhouse gas emissions with a negative sign. We 
would have a macroeconomic indicator uh, that include some of negative externalities. I'm sorry. And uh, the system of national accounts is de developed from the basic concepts of the circular flow of income and expedi expenditures in the economy. And it provides an essentially standardized framework for compiling and organizing aggregated national statistics that characterize the economic profile of an economy. For example, the GDP. So the DGP refers to the market value of all final goods and the services produced within a country in a, in a given period, usually a year. So this is the economic flaws of income and factors. This is the simple model because here we have just two agents, the business and the households, business or enterprises, and the two markets, the factor market and the product market, product market. <coughs> and the assumption is that the household has the ownership of the, the factors such as labor, land and capital and they are paid for offering them to the enterprise in the factor market in order to allow them buy goods and services from the enterprise in a product market. This assumption uh, when supply is equal to expenditures, it's necessary to build, to create a square matrix and to do sensitive analysis it's of the economy, so it's possible. Questions and the objects of my project. How can negative externalities be considered in the macroeconomic indicators like the GDP? And how can I include the greenhouse gas emissions in the Brazilian Amazon GDP? My proposal is build an environmental social account matrix for the Brazilian Amazon and how combine two mathematical models, input output analysis and the, tra the traditional social account matrix, but handled according to the United Nation, Nations guide, guidelines in its handbook on national accounts. So, now I will show what is the social account matrix, the input output analysis, specifically the pollution generation elimination model of Leontief, and some guidelines of the handbook of national accounts that help us to do, to build this model. So, theoretical background and methodology of my project. The input output analysis or the pollution generation elimination model, specifically. The pollution generation elimination model is a kind of input output analysis, but Leon TF included here the, the pollution. So, the basic principle of this model is that the economic activities create pollution as a byproduct. In this model, there are a techni technique ma uh, matrix that can, can tell me how much necessary to produce a good or service and how much necessary one of good to produce a each good and services in the economy. So, in this matrix, in this matrix, a rule of coefficients represent the physical output of each polluted per dollar of sector output is augmented to the matrix for the of technological coefficients, <coughs> thus allowing a projection of total pollution associated with any vector of final demand. So it's very interesting because in a matrix, in this kind of model, we have exogenous variables and endogenous variables. And when you change the exogenous variables, automatically you can figure out the change inside of the endogenous variables. So, 
it allows us to do sensitive, sensitivity analysis. So it is an input-to-put analysis framework traditional. Here we have three, three mainly account, mainly three accounts. The inter-industry inter transactions, final demand, and the added value. In the inter-industry inter -industry transactions, we have sectors, sectors of the economy. In final demand, the final demand is, is formed by household, government, investment, exports, and added value is the labor, capital, taxes. The payment sector is formed by added value and imports. And this total uh, have to be equal, this total. It is an assumption of the model. Because the, because the supply is equal to the expenditures. Okay? So the model considers it. This assumption. <coughs> this is the pollution generation elimination model de Leon, of Le Leontier. So we can figure out that Leontief included the anti pollution activity here and polluted by sector of the economy. And an interesting assumption is that the, the household. Uh, tolerates part of the, of <coughs> the pollution from the production, but the household has to pay the necessary to cover <coughs> what the active, uh, anti pollution activity will try decrease of pollution <coughs> to decrease of pollution. About the social accounting matrix, uh, this is a square matrix consists of a series of accounts for various agents, and compared with the input output technique, which cap captures only sectoral interdependence in a detailed production account, the SAM further incorporates the interaction among production factors, income, consumption, and capital accumulation in a account framework. This is the framework on, of a expanded social account matrix, traditional. So here we have five accounts, big accounts. U is the use matrix uh, that, that is commodities used by industry. V is the make matrix, commodity supplied by industry. F is the final demand. Value added input to industry is W. And R is sources of value added income. And the GDP here is the sum of value added inputs or the sum of all final demands. So, so here in added value, there is depreciation, and the depreciation has a negative sign, so it decreases the GDP. Um, so if I include natural dep depreciation with negative sign, I can decrease the GDP too. Uh, here we have some guidelines on to how to treat the environmental in the national accounts from the handbook of United Nations about system of national accounts. So the total assets of an economy are the sum of the total economy, uh, economic assets and the total environmental assets. The depreciation is the sum of fixed capital and the natural capital. The natural capital depreciation is divided into exhaustion, 
variation of environmental assets stocks, and degradation, loss of environmental assets quality. quality. So, we can calculate a environmental or ecological net domestic product. product. It is equal to the GDP less the depreciation of fixed capital less the depreciation of natural capital. So, based, based in these assumptions and the three and the two models, we did it the environmental social accounting matrix. So, we had included the natural capital depreciation and environmental taxes in the added value. We had included the abatement activities in the, in the use and make matrices. And we had included the investment, investment of natural capital in the final demand. <coughs> so now we have four new categories. Uh, the abatement activities included in the production accounting are activities that produce products to eliminate and or reduce the greenhouse gas emissions or protect the environment. The evaluation method that we will use is the production cost. The depreciation of natural capital is the loss of air quality due to greenhouse gas emissions. And the evaluation method that we will use is the environmental protection expenditures. The environmental tax is the necessary value that may be claimed from industries to invest in the environmental recovery that was not possible through abatement activities. And the devaluation method, method is the environmental protection expenditures. And the, the investment in natural capital is the investment in machines to environment, environmental recovery and re reforestation. And the evaluation method that we will use is the production cost related with the market price. So, why social account matrix? Mm, because it allows for including, including depreciation, determining which activities are responsible for emissions, doing sensitive analysis about economic performance outcomes, and it's possible disaggregating some accounts, for example, the household by income, income level. The weaknesses and limitations of the model. The technical coefficient is fixed, so it's not possible to do long-term analysis. The sensitivity analysis is not possible in the long term. And unavailability of environmental data. For me, it's a big problem when you can you want to work with env uh, environmental research because we don't have available data to do it. The conclusion: the environmental social accounting matrix is a useful tool that allows for simulations to understand the behavior of the economy and its agents in response to exogenous changes. It can offer macroeconomic indicators and provide policymakers with the possibility to do economic analysis that support their planning. And by successfully running the model, including greenhouse gas emissions, we can then move on to include all the environmental data, such as discharge of waste in the water, reduction of minerals and soil loss. Um, and that is it. <laughs> so, uh, as I said before, it's my project, my thesis is not finished, and I would like to receive from you 
some advice, and suggestions, corrections. I am here because of that. <laughs> Have, have you built the matrices yet? Sorry? Have you built the matrices yet? Do you have the data? Uh, we have the data of emissions. This emission is anthropogenic from the production, actually. We have the um, input output matrix to Brazil. See, again, and we have been working with Justin the year of 2005 because this inventory um, gave us just in, until 2005 but I did I don't, I think that is not here but I did I did a mat matrix with hypothetical data to to try this model and the, and the, it was possible and it works working okay. yes. Yes. Ah, yes I think that see. industrialization industrial manufacturing plants and hazardous waste you mentioned a lot of it was agricultural the anthropogenic but what about the industrial? Is that broken out in any way? Well, the industries is included in the sectors, the, yeah. The toxic hazardous waste pollution. Mm -hmm. See, see, some of the industries are included in the matrix. Yes, yes. Okay. Because the inventory of the Ministry of Science and Technology uh, calculated the emissions from production, activity production. So it's included already, yeah. But well, you're just focused on greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, why? No, you're, just, you're only focused on greenhouse gas yes. emissions now, not, not toxics and other things, right? No, just the greenhouse gases. Just greenhouse gases, gases. Yeah. And, and if you can get that to work, yes. then See, you could include other things later. Yes, <laughs> yes. CO2, methane, and the oxide, nitrous oxide. Yes, I think that I I can show the model with the hypothetical data. Ah, sorry, it's in Portuguese. <laughs> but numbers are numbers. So for the cameras you have the period. So right now you have a very aggregated model just to see if you can Yes. Here I have I have the expanded matrix. It's the the same matrix that is in the in the book input to input to put analysis of uh, Miller and Blair. I just included the environment here. Activity abutments, activity abutments. the environmental taxes, depreciation of natural capital, and investment in natural capital. But this matrix is sector by product. <coughs> and I compiled it in sector by sector. I calculated the calculated the technical coefficient, the Leon TF, matrix of Leon TF. And for example, with this model, I can calculate first I have this <coughs> final demand. This production, it is emission. But in activity abatement, I, I don't have emission. I have abatement. Okay? When I change the final demand, I will 
I will have other other amount of production, total production, and emissions and abatement. And here I have the variation in percentage. <coughs> and when I finished everything, I could figure out that the total it is a assumption of the model because we want to calculate how much necessa is necessary of investment in environmental taxes so that the um emitted emitted thank you mm -hmm. the emitted total is equal to the captured total total capture yes that is it i have a question um <laughs> Who else is kind of working on this theoretically within Brazil? Is it the government? Is it other people in mm -hmm. academia? Is private industry involved, mm -hmm. like accounting firms? Mm -hmm. Who else is looking to do this type of work? Mm -hmm. In Brazil, the IBGE, Instituto Brasileiro de Geografia e Estatística, is, respons is responsible for calculate the social accounting, sorry, the system of national account, mm -hmm and the, the input output matrix. But the social account matrix, uh, it, it, has not, it didn't have calculated uh, just the researchers. Researchers, okay. Just researchers. I'm still not sure what this is going to be used for. Uh, you can change components of final demand Yes. Which will change emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, is that one of the possibilities? Yes, because it, well, it's a model, okay? and in the real real life, it's true. Because when the final demand change, so it's ne it would it would be necessary more production and at least more pollution pollution. It is, it is your question? Well, yes. Uh, well, let me rephrase it. Uh, I've done some work in energy I.O. over the years, and one of our hypotheses was that we could change components of final demand in a way that would minimize energy consumption. Yes. And to determine how much energy we needed, we used the, the I.O. approach. Just the one you talked about. Yes. Except with it's energy instead of pollution. So that's one possible application. Is that an application you are intending to use? Yes. yes. Okay, another question is, <coughs> if, if you weren't doing that, uh, the idea that GDP has some things that should be subtracted, such as environmental damage, mm -hmm. is, is not exactly a new idea. You know, it's a popular idea around here. Yes, yes, And, and if you were just going to look at that part of it, you're only going to look at the corrections to GDP to get something more environmentally appropriate, you wouldn't need the IO model. You wouldn't need input output for that. You could just take the GDP for that region mm -hmm. and subtract some of the costs you come up with, and you've got a new number, which is a corrected GDP. Yes. So I guess I'm saying uh, it, it's good you are looking at changing the market basket in final demand, that's what we call it. Because if you weren't, if you're just looking at corrections to GDP, you wouldn't need the model. At the level you mm -hmm. And the third question: This is uh, I've never I've been in Brazil for one week, and I was in Campinas, so I've never seen this part of Brazil. But to what extent does this model, this part of Brazil, really tell what's going on in that in that region? Given that uh, there are a lot of some indigenous peoples, and I'm guessing there's probably a, a black market and a gray market that's not part of the economic calculation. In other words, to what extent, how valid is this database for that particular region? <clears throat> well, I, I will try to answer your question. I hope that I have understood it well. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's true, it's not my idea, including correction the GDP, correct the GDP. <clears throat> but 
I I think it is a, it is a different difference uh, between try to correct the DDP, trying to correct the DDP in the economic aspects and when you include the total environment or environment because some some times I I have figured out that some research is included in the kind of model for example that is economic the environmental but stocks and the variations of stocks and it it is good it is good I think it's good but I was talking about it with Professor Josh and he suggests me Andrea make it, maybe you have to introduce to include the variation of capital natural for example but if you included the net emissions for example because that is a cap ca the environmental uh, has the capacity to capture emissions I have to include to the natural emissions of CO2 and the other kind of cases and my my object with with it is not just include the the greenhouse gas emissions but I, I can I want to have the opportunity to do sensitivity sensitivity analysis and I don't consider that the ecological or environmental net um, domestic product is a is a, a appropriate indicator of refer but is a economic indicator of welfare and it can be used in other indicators that includes other kind of variables to improve the welfare and I think the other question is why Amazon region? No, no. no, let's cancel that. I asked you about three questions at once, which is not fair. Okay. So thank you. I can rephrase. Thank you. I can rephrase one of the questions. Hmm? Some of them, including um, external data. Hmm. External data for populations indigenous to Lombok. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. yes. I think common in English. Indigenous. Thank you. Ah, it's yeah. not so hard. <laughs> so actually, it's a bit hard to include to include um, the impact on the indigenous community in this kind of model. It's a bit because it's a bit subjective. I know it's it's a it's a bit hard to calculate. But in Brazil, there are some researchers about it, researchers about it. And if you have interest, I can, I can find, I can find for you to you. Yeah? Can you talk a little bit more about the model itself? I don't know anything about the input-output model. Model? So the thing I'm wondering in particular is, is it kind of a spreadsheet, as you say, just making sure inputs and outputs balance, or is it a model in the sense that there are dynamics inside it. Yeah, okay. I didn't understand how exogenous changes can ramify through ah, endogenous okay. ones if it looks as simple as your Excel okay. file looks. So I can, I think that I, I can, well, in this model, the assumption is that the, the final demand is exogenous of the model. And the, this other kind of variable is endogenous in the model. So, for example, I have the total of the production. So, the total of the uh, final demand, if I change, for example, I will put 100. 
This is the Toro, okay? Oh. That's fine over there. Fine. Oh, I'm, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the Toro production, okay? For this final demand. If I change the final demand that is exogenous of the model, look at it that every everything will be changed. And I can I can for example I can have other uh, inter-industry uh, matrix. Mm -hmm. yes. Is it all, is it all uh, linear so that things just yes. add up simply? Yes, linear, yes. Okay, so that, this is like my second question, is the sensitivity analysis. It seems to me that if that's all true, um, I don't know what you learn from a sensitivity analysis because if you change something by 2%, everything you care about will also change by 2%. So if everything's linear, yes. I don't understand the interesting sensitivity analysis angle. Was that clear? Yes, because it's linear, so if I change the 20%, uh, yeah. you have... And your table in your, in your, in your document, the word yes. that showed that. Like a 5% yes. change, like a 5% change, and a 10% change. So, I just wanted to know if you could explain more about the sensitivity <laughs> analysis and what you hope to learn there. Uh, could I interject? Um, of course. There is a matrix inversion as a part of this thing, uh -huh. so it becomes very nonlinear. Oh, okay. So sensitivity is not a trivial issue. Okay, that's what I was missing. Right. Okay. So that is it. Yeah, I think you're, you're glossing over the very important detail of capturing all of those <laughs> multiplier effects that happen. <coughs> that you, you say inter inter-industry transactions, that's the real power of input-output. Yes. Is that you can take these one-time shocks, but then it sort of cascades across the economy, and there's, and there's these multiplicative effects that occur, and that's what you're trying, that's what you're trying to measure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in this model, uh, well, I think we didn't develop, develop, developed a <coughs> new model. I think we improved a model, a model of expanded and social accounting matrix. And in this model, the social accounting matrix and the input output analysis, there are very um, many multipliers. Yeah? Multipliers? Mm -hmm. And these multipliers can can tell me, for example, if the final demand chain, what is the impact on the all the, the economy? Mm -hmm. And for me, it's interesting because it can help to policymakers in their planning, for example. It, yeah. it, well, it's a model, linear model, and it is a bit simple, but if it would be exp exponential, it's almost impossible. It's possible, but it's very, very hard. Yeah, Professor, I, I, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you say it's linear. It's linear algebra, but, yes, it's, linear. but the, the inverse creates some very interesting mm -hmm. questions. Outputs. Because I found one <coughs> that the research calculated in exponential. So he considered the variation of the technological, technical coefficients. Mm -hmm. so we, how uh, calculate uh, the, the change of it. Thanks, that helps. I have a question to that. Yeah. And this has to do, um, you know, as I told you, I haven't played with these things in like 20 years. So I'm, um, but it seems to me that if you include depreciation in one of these models, your final demand has investment. So it makes sense to subtract depreciation as a reduction of the investment. Um, so for natural capital, or for built capital, I mean, so you, you depreciate and you have your capital stock at it. Um, so you can, I mean, so you're looking at output from built capital. But if you depreciate for natural capital, there's no final demand for the natural capital in there. When you depreciate, you would take away out of your measures of built capital. And the thing is, in, and you know, again, I'm not sure I'm phrasing this, but when we, de we depreciate for, uh, when we subtract for depreciation, there's still net investment. So we're not actually having less capacity the following year because we're just discounting the investments required to maintain capacity. But with natural capital, 
we're systematically, you know, if you're saying, okay, um, depreciation, CO2, net CO2 emission to the atmosphere, depreciation, but this is an accumulating stock that keeps doing more and more harm. And, you know, in the, in the input output with built capital, the depreciation is something we actually feed back in to maintain a productive capacity. The depreciation for natural capital is this accumulating, you know, it's growing into a bigger yes. and bigger negative stock and doing more harm, but we never have any final demand for natural capital. And I don't, you know, I don't really know, and this is open for anybody, if anybody understood what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, you first. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about it after yeah. our meeting, but I, I thought if I, I include, for example, the variation of natural capital, and I, I have, I have to include all aspects of the environment. I have to include too the natural emission of CO2. We well, used to look or, at the, the, net, the difference between natural yes, emissions and natural the net, the net emissions, for example, too. And yeah. I, Which is net sequestration, I think. Yes, so I think if I, I would like to do it, I have to change a bit a model. But yes, I will think about it. Well, just because I was thinking, because what occurred to me, and, you know, after our conversation, I have to say I don't know much. This model shows final demand for the built capital. Yeah. It does not show <coughs> final demand for the natural capital. It's by byproduct, like Leon TF says. The pollution is a byproduct of the production. Right. Like it, I think. But then it just accumulates for so when you just yes. count it's depreciation, it seems to me yes, that it's I, it's um it's depreciation. It's like if you depleted your capital stock every year without rebuilding it, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And and but you know, in those models, investment Rebuilds and we, you know, I don't know, I'm, and I don't never, I don't, like I said, it's 20 years ago. Yes, I think sites. that I have to think more about it and then try to include more aspects, maybe. Well, okay. I have a response. I mean, we're always dancing between flows and stocks, right. mm -hmm. or income and wealth. <clears throat> and the one example you brought up just can't really do it with either a flow based model Which is, or a stock based model. Yeah. So, this, you know, if you think about Stella or whatever the most recent yeah. version is, you've got arrows connecting boxes, the boxes are stocks, yeah. the arrows are flows. The standard IO model is really just the arrows. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing to add, um, one piece of your question is because you have a square matrix and you, for every depreciation activity you have to have an addition activity. So she, she, she has added that in. So if there's, ec if there's ecological degradation, there's also ecological restoration. Yeah. So you can you can have both of those. Now one might be stronger than the other right. in a given time period, and that that's fine. But you can make these models dynamic. Um, what you've described here is your standard kind of static, one shot <clears throat> model, exogenous change. What happens? But these input output models are the basis for the computable general equilibrium models, where the main main question in those models is capital accumulation. Now they've only really investigated kind of built capital accumulation. And that's what sort of creates the, the basket of goods for future growth in those models. And they are dynamic. And at the core of those models is an input output model. Mm -hmm. um, you could also, and I think some people have started to play around with natural capital depreciation and also investment. And this is my question. Models. So if you have a dynamic model and you have natural capital depreciation, um, you, it seems you have to have your you have to be quantifying the flow of benefits from the natural capital yep. that you. That's, so that's what those models do. There's, there's, uh, there, there. If you add in econometric equations on top of these kind of static relationships and prices and everything else to show that there's a kind of a behavior to economic investment. And at the core of those models is is a simple choice: Do I take what I made last year and do I, do I put it into consumption or do I put it into investment? And, and if you don't, if you don't put anything into investment, then eventually you can't consume any more of those models. So that has to be kind of an investment dynamic. Mm -hmm. What they haven't really explored is are the natural capital models. And, you know, those are the models that are used to sort of predict recessions and. Right. And, and I assume that anything that does incorporate natural capital simply loses another, you know, same with money. You know, just like measured as money and. So there's no distinction between natural. And yeah, it just doesn't include it at all. It's just not right. not seen as a capital asset. One question, how, can you give a concrete example of an investment in natural capital? 
So, you know, ecological like, like restoration, uh, tree planting, mm -hmm. um, carbon dioxide. Well, you know, making an artificial wetland. Uh, lot, True. Yeah. Okay. So I think in the context of greenhouse gas emissions, that the balancing activity between afforestation and yeah. deforestation in the simplest yeah. terms, right, yeah. is that kind of <coughs> divestment-investment mm -hmm. kind of relationship that you could handle in a very static sense here, mm -hmm. but in a full dynamic model, you could right. really get after that. Cool. That is it. And I guess one of the things that seems that, you know, you invest in uh, um, the abatement, you keep abating yeah. um, until the marginal cost of abatement are greater than the marginal cost of uh, pollution. Right. And, but the thing is that, that, so you stop abating there, but that additional pollution atmosphere has cost forever. And you're always, so, you know, so it seems mm -hmm. that those, you know, is a whole string of future costs. Mm -hmm. And you're just accounting for it in the current time period, and then you'll account for it in the next, but in the next, you're not going to count that whole future string of costs. Yeah, and I think to include, for, to include it, I think that I will move to Modelo de Equilibrio General in English. Right, so that's the computable general equilibrium. Mm -hmm. But those are very, very difficult. Yes, yes. And I, yeah, don't I think that I am not taking that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but in, the, in those kinds of models, you would absolutely have, uh, in, you know, depreciation coefficients. Mm -hmm. So you would say this year's greenhouse gases last for this many years, and you could certainly account, account for that because it's a, it's a right. multiple so year have, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you could certainly account mm -hmm. for the accumulation of impacts from past year's, yeah. you know, outputs or capital decisions or whatever. Yeah. But people's marginally utility decision of the cost of payment greater than the cost of accepting it would have to account for that whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. When you get to depreciation then, when you talk about bioaccumulated toxins, that's a whole other extension of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, when it gets in the food chain, so how can you really, I mean, this is beyond the scope probably, but how could you really quantify this type of de environmental mm -hmm. depreciation? <laughs> You know, 50 or 70 years ago, it may have been a polluted stream. Now it's a landfill with, you know, plastics that are going to be there till time and memorial. So it's hard to know what depreciation means in the 21st century. And we haven't even really begun to face what we've actually done to the environment in the last 70 years. I need to catch up with the rule about this, but the latest version of MIMES has at its core kind of an input-output structure. So this is this dynamic ecosystem services model mm -hmm. that tries to sort of account for those that kind of that dynamism, that's a word. Um, to, to, and you could look at bioaccumulation, you could look at capital accumulation, you could look at all these kinds of questions. So all comes back to, <coughs> do you have good data to... Mm -hmm. well, I think my time finished. <laughs> and um, can I can I talk, can I say some words more? Yeah. Um, well, next week he, I am going back to Brazil, and um, I would I would say thank you very much for receiving me here at Gand, and uh, I had three and half. Wonderful months here, and um, in the Gandhi, I I received of from my friends some advice and suggestion that improved my my work, and um, I I would like to say thank you very much, Alessandra. Alessandra is from Brazil, is my friend, <laughs> and. Uh, she helped me a lot with this presentation because for me, actually, is a challenge to talk in public in English, not in public, public, but in English. And Juan helped me a lot, Brian. Thank you very much. So that is it. Thank you.